When you combine Angular with the Electron framework, it becomes easy to create native desktop apps that can run on any platform. In this episode, we're going to build a simple timer application with Angular, then run that app natively on Mac OS, Windows 10, and Ubuntu. With just a little bit of configuration, we'll be able to build an executable file for all three of these platforms, while still being able to run the app in a web browser. A large number of high-profile companies use Electron to distribute their software. It was originally developed by GitHub, and it's used by WordPress, VS Code, Slack, and many others. Before we get started building the app for this video, I just want to point out that you can get all the source code at angularfirebase.com or on GitHub, and all the links are in the description. So the first thing we're going to do is install the Angular CLI, then create a new app by running ng-new, and then we'll cd into that directory. From there, we just need to make one small change to the index.html file in the source directory. You'll notice the base href points to a single slash. To make this work with Electron, we just need to add a single period in front of it. From here, we're going to install Electron into our development environment. So run npm install Electron flag save dev. The next step is to create a file called main.js in the root of your Angular project. Main.js is where you handle all the backend logic for an Electron app. So first, we're going to import the app and browser window objects. First, we declare a variable when that defines how the app will look when the user first opens it on their operating system. So our timer app is going to be 600 pixels by 600 pixels with a background color of white. And I also have a logo image file in the assets folder of my app. And just so you know, the underscore dir name is a node.js variable that refers to the actual location of a file on this particular system. Then the next step is to call win load URL with the index file for our app. It's important to point out that we're telling Electron to use the index.html file in our dist folder, not the source folder. At this point, that file doesn't actually exist, but we're going to build it here in the next step with ahead of time compilation. I also want to point out that Electron's built with the Chromium browser engine. So if you want to use Chrome DevTools during development, you can just uncomment this line and they'll appear directly in your app window. The window object has a whole bunch of different events that we can listen to. In this case, when the window is closed, we just set it equal to null. And the app object also has events we can listen to. The most important one being when the app is ready. In that case, that's when we run the create window function. There are certain situations where you want to handle things differently based on the operating system. In Mac OS, or Darwin as it's called, it generally doesn't close the application when you close the window. It stays running in the background. So as long as the operating system doesn't equal Darwin, we can go ahead and tell the app to quit when all the windows are closed. So depending on the complexity of your app, you may need to listen to different events and handle things differently on a per operating system basis. The next thing we're going to do is create a custom command that will build our app in Angular with ahead of time compilation and then run Electron. Here inside package.json, we'll first add the main.js file. Then we create the custom command by going down here to scripts and we'll create one command just to run Electron. Then a second command called electron-build that will first run the Angular production build with ahead of time compilation and then run electron directly after that. Let's try it out from the command line. Go ahead and run npm run electron build. After Angular is done building your production app, electron will then pull up a window on your operating system with the baseline Angular app. So that's pretty cool. We already have our own desktop app. Now we just need to turn it into something useful and then package it for execution on various operating systems. What we're going to build is just a simple timer using the Angular SVG round progress bar package, which you can install with NPM. Then we'll allow the user to set the value of the timer and have it play a sound once it reaches the end. To build the app, we'll first go into the app module. Then we'll import the forms module and the round progress module that we just installed then add both of those to the import section. From here, we can start building the timer and the app component. First, I'm importing a few RxJS operators, which you'll see in use here in a second. Then for the timer itself, we're going to set a max value, which is the total length of the timer. And then we'll set a current value, which is the current second that that timer is at. Then we're going to use TypeScript getters to handle a few issues that I came across during development. The progress bar will throw an error if the value is not a number. If that is the case, then we'll return a default floor value of 0.1. This will ensure that the max value is always a number and always greater than or equal to 0.1. Then we'll do the same basic thing here for the current value, but this time we'll allow its floor value to go down to zero. 
And we can determine if the timer is finished by seeing if the current value is greater than or equal to the max value. From this point, we'll set up some event handlers to allow the user to interact with the timer. The first thing they can do is start it. And to do that, we'll use an observable interval from RxJS that will tick every tenth of a second. We can use the take while operator to only take values from this observable when the timer is not finished. Then we'll use the do operator to increment the current value by one tenth of a second each time this observable emits. Then we can start the timer by just calling subscribe on it. To finish the timer, all we have to do is set the current value to the max value. Because we set up the take while operator in the previous method, this will automatically cause the observable to complete. The last thing we need is to reset the timer, and we can do that by simply setting the current value back to zero. Now we just need to put everything together in the HTML. I'm wrapping everything in a main div, and then I'll set another div here that holds the progress timer. And we're only going to show this if the max value does exist. Then we can declare the round progress component and add a few input values to it. Current will be the current value getter, and max will be the max value getter. Round progress has a whole bunch of other customization options that you can check out in the documentation. For now, I'm just going to set the radius and the stroke width. When the progress timer has not finished, we want to be able to show the user how many seconds are remaining. We can do that by just subtracting the max value from the current value, and then we'll use the angular number pipe to format this as just one digit with at least one decimal point. When the timer is finished, we want to show the user that it's done and also play a sound. So to play a sound, we can just use the HTML audio tag and point the source to an MP3 file that I have saved in the assets directory. And also make sure to include the autoplay property. The next step is to give the user a form input where they can set the number of seconds the timer will be set for. So we'll do that with ng-model and set that to the max value in the TypeScript. Whenever the user types in this input, we know they're resetting the timer, so we'll go ahead and call the reset method. Then we'll set up a couple buttons here that are displayed conditionally based on the state of the timer. And the first one will be to start it. That is shown if the current value is less than or equal to zero. Then we'll set up a second button here to finish the timer if the user decides they want to complete it early. So that's it for the Angular app. That's all we need to create a basic timer. Let's go ahead and rebuild the app and test it out. I'm currently working on a Linux Ubuntu machine and this is the result that I get here. We can have the user enter the number of seconds and click start and the timer starts and it's animated and plays the sound. So at this point, the Angular app's ready to go, but we still need to package it to be used on native desktop applications. There's a tool called Electron Packager that will help us do this from the command line. So we want to have that installed globally and in our local Angular development environment. With our current configuration, we can just call Electron Packager from the root of the project then specify the platform we want to build for, in this case, Win32, or Windows. If you're not on a Windows machine, you'll also have to install WineHQ, so just a heads up on that. After a few seconds, it creates a new directory in the root of the project with the build for Windows. So you can see all the different Windows-specific files here, as well as the executable file. So now I'm switching over to a Windows machine, and we'll see if this actually works. We'll click on the exe file, and then the timer comes up as expected and works just like it did on Linux. Now we can go back and repeat the process for Mac OS. This time we'll specify the platform as Darwin, and you'll see we get another build file here, this time with all Mac OS specific files in it. Now I'm jumping over to my Mac laptop to make sure it works here as well. You will get warnings that it's an unknown developer because the application hasn't been signed. That's beyond the scope of this video, but I may cover it in the future. Other than a few presentational differences, the timer works exactly the same on all three platforms. That's it for Angular with Electron. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get one-on-one -on -one project consulting as well as a free copy of my Angular Firebase survival guide. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.